What we're going to need in order to proceed with the Kalman filter is a technical lemma about products of Gaussians. This is going to be some work, so get ready and let's think about products of Gaussians. The claim is that if we take two Gaussians, multiply them together, we get again a Gaussian, up to rescaling. Okay, let's start out with a, a simpler version, a lemma. Let's take any quadratic function of x, ax squared minus 2bx plus c, exponentiate that with a minus 1 half in front of it. I claim that that is a Gaussian whose mean is b over a and whose variance is 1 over a. Again, a, b, and c are constants, a is non-zero. How do we prove this? It's algebra. Let's take that quadratic, forgetting the minus 1 half, let's factor out an a and then divide through by 1 over a so that we get x squared minus 2b over a x plus c over a all divided by 1 over a. Now I'm going to do completing the square and I'm going to get quantity x minus b over a squared divided by 1 over a plus some constant. Now, when I exponentiate this with a minus one half in front, I get a Gaussian whose mean is b over a and whose variance is what's in the denominator, the one over a. Now, what about all that, that constant stuff that's left over? We're not gonna care about that because when I exponentiate that, that by exponent laws is just some rescaling out in front, and we're not going to care about that. Now, how does this help us? Oh, okay. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to say now we have two arbitrary Gaussians in 1D with expectation E0 and E1 and variances V0 and V1. And I'm going to multiply them together. I'm going to take E to the minus 1 half quantity X minus E0 squared divided by V0 times e to the minus one half quantity x minus e one squared divided by v one. And I'm going to expand those quadratics out. I'm going to add the two exponents together. And then I'm going to do a bunch of algebra, factoring things out into a nice quadratic. And what I get is e to the minus one half times a quadratic function in x where the coefficient in front of x squared is 1 over v0 plus 1 over v1. The coefficient in front of the x term is minus 2 times quantity e0 over v0 plus e1 over v1. And then I have some constant at the end, and I don't care about that. But notice, notice what we have. We have something that fits this lemma where for a, we have the quantity 1 over v0 plus 1 over v1. And for b, we have the quantity e0 over v0 plus e1 over v1. So now we can use this lemma and determine that the new variance is 1 over a, that is 1 over quantity 1 over v0 plus 1 over v1. With a little bit of algebra, putting that over a common factor, I get v0 v1 divided by v0 plus v1. Now that's the variance. What is the mean? The new expectation is e0 over v0 plus e1 over v1, all of that divided by 1 over v0 plus 1 over v1. Putting that again over a common denominator, we get v1 e0 plus v0 e1 divided by v0 plus v1. Whew, I'm kind of tired, and this proof only works in 1D. You can do the higher dimensional proof. You can do the higher dimensional proof. I'm not going to show the steps for that, but I hope you'll trust me when I say that it is doable, and what we get in the end when we take a product of two Gaussians with mean vectors E0 and E1, and covariance matrices V0 and V1, respectively, is again a Gaussian whose mean is, I take the matrix V0 plus V1 and I invert it. Pre-multiply by V1, post-multiply by E0. Add to that V0 plus V1 inverse, pre-multiplied by V0, 
post multiplied by e1. Now that sounds crazy, but if you look at the structure of the expression for e in 1D, it fits this exactly. We can no longer just divide by v0 plus v1. We have to add those covariance matrices together, then take the inverse and be careful with the order of multiplication. In like manner, the new covariance matrix is v0 plus v1 inverse pre-multiplied by v1 post-multiplied by v0. Now, these formulae are complicated, but they are wonderful because they allow us to move forward with the Kalman filter. They show us how to update Gaussians by multiplying them together.